I've just got to ask right off the top here, how do we know what they sounded like all those thousands of years ago? I mean, that's probably the most common question that you get. I wanted to get that out of the way before asking about you, your past, why you got into this um, mm -hmm. this particular niche of, of all the things that you could be doing in academia. How do we know what they sounded like? Yeah, that's a great question. And you're right. I do get asked that a lot. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, and it's the first thing to recognize is that ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, even though they look like picture writing, are actually primarily phonetic. So there are a few signs that are uh, what we call determinatives, uh, that are uh, picture signs, but they're usually combined with the spelling of a word. Uh, so, for example, anything to do with thought or uh, sort of intellectual activities is a little papyrus scroll. Anything to do with emotion is a little person with a hand to their mouth. Like, they're like, ooh, you know, uh, and then, and similar kinds of things. Some of them are really literal, like the word for crocodile has a crocodile, and sometimes you can just use the hieroglyph for the crocodile, but more often it's actually spelt out. And so, the, but the writing system is really complicated, and it only consists of consonants. So they didn't write down vowels, um, and they, you have different different groupings of consonants, so they're kind of like little word skeletons in a way. Um, and you, the, you have a combination of signs that, that are basically alphabetic. They stand for a single consonant, but again, no vowels, uh, or two consonants or three consonants, rarely four. And they it, and they, so they combine them in this very complicated system. It's the total number of signs is about seven hundred, so it's a little tricky. Um, the question of why they didn't have vowels is a good one. And the thinking is that in a way it wasn't really needed as much as in Indo-European languages, like, uh, and, you know, especially some of the Romance languages where you have, and Ger German and other languages where you have case markings. And there you need, and similar with English, when you have the conjugation of verbs, you can't really understand it unless you know what the vowels are, because they mark what the tense of the verb is, for example, whether it's a direct object and so on in in other terms but in arabic and hebrew there also are no vowels uh, they use wow. added diacritical marks but the original scripts don't have vowels and of course i've worked in egypt and sudan so i and traveled widely in the middle east so you know i've talked with people and and they tell me that that uh you know when they're writing down arabic yeah sometimes they put in those little diacritical marks for vowels and they just leave them out because the meaning's obvious and so obvious to that era exactly so so yeah. for us reading ancient egyptian it's a pain i would really <laughs> love to have the vowels um and if you really want to understand how the language works you need to be able to reconstruct those those vowels and and the the um you know syllabic structure of the language which isn't obvious from these consonantal skeletons so the way we do that is we have uh, a number of different lines of evidence so we have those little consonant structures uh, but there is a survival of ancient Egyptian that's lasted into modern times called Coptic. And that today it's no longer spoken, uh, except for a few people who want to revive it. Uh, but it's, uh, it's still used in the Coptic Christian church as a liturgical language, kind of like Latin in the Roman Catholic church. And so that maintained pronunciations from about the second century CE when uh, the language is written down using the, a modified Greek alphabet, uh, so that which included vowels. Uh, and that uh, gives us a pronunciation, kind of a baseline pronunciation from right at that time, including conjugations and everything else. But of course, that's a very different language after a thousand right. years, you know, to the language that was spoken, say, around the time of King Tut. And there we actually do have quite a lot of evidence for pronunciation from uh, the uh, the transcription of ancient Egyptian names into cuneiform, which is that wedgie writing on clay tablets that was used in Mesopotamia. And so there's a, a whole bunch of diplomatic correspondence that survived, one in a big uh, archeological archive from uh, the city of Amarna in Egypt, and another from a place called Hattushas in uh, our Bagazkoy in modern times in Turkey which is the archive of the Hittite Empire. And so the Egyptians exchanged these diplomatic texts, and there are a few other groups of these documents that have shown up. And they're normally written in a language called Akkadian, uh, which is a related 
distantly to sort of Arabic and, and Hebrew and the like. It's a Semitic language. Uh, but the names are trans, Egyptian names are transcribed. So I'll just give you one example of what happens when you do that. Please. Um, and so uh, the fame, name of the famous pharaoh Ramses or Ramesses, and that's how an Egypt, Egyptologist would normally pronounce it. Well, we know what we actually know how that name was pronounced because it's transcribed into these texts. And you have to fiddle a little bit with, with it. Cuneiform is actually a syllabary, so it includes vowel consonant combinations. So you've got to fuss with it a little bit. But by the time you can really work out what the original pronunciation was, and so the pronunciation of Ramses was originally Ri'amasesu. So very different from Ramses. Um, and Just a wee bit. Just a little bit, yeah. So Egyptologists, because you have to, you know, it, it takes a little bit of work to re do these reconstructions. What you can do is you, you, you get uh, a few words, like the name for the sun god, uh, which normally Egyptologists and most other people would pronounce Ra, which is Ryu. totally wrong. Yeah, exactly. It's Ryu in Stargate. Very yeah. good. Um, and by the New Kingdom, uh, by the time of King Tut, it was Ria. Uh, because the W drops, the W is actually a consonant, that U sound at the end. Um, so that, that you can look at those consonantal changes. And I built all of that into Stargate. So I used some archaic pronunciations because I figured the name of the sun god might be sacred and might continue um, right. in a very old kind of archaic form. But other things I pulled in from Coptic um, and how you get some of the ch changes and transformations over time to create a a kind of interesting blend of, of uh, pronunciations rather than an exact pronunciation from say King Tut's time um, or King Ramses's time, uh, which I actually did do for the mummy movies. So I, I reconstructed the pronunciations there, which are set right about that time, the reign of Seti the first, the father of Ramses the second. Right. Um, and so that's exactly when we have all this evidence for pronunciation. So then what you can do is take those names and names in ancient Egyptian, like Ramses or the Yamashesa, is actually a um, uh, a little sentence. So it means Ra bore or engendered him. And so you get conjugation of verbs and all sorts of grammatical points from that as these names as well. So you can take all of that evidence for a small number of words and structures and things. You can check it against Coptic and reconstruct things like vowel shifts and so on. And there's some other evidence. There's some names that were transcribed into Greek, ancient Egyptian names that give us a sense there uh, in the you know, 400s BC into Persian uh, earlier than that. And so you can trace the development of the language uh, over time and reconstruct something that's a pretty plausible um, pronunciation. I mean, I, I, I've always thought of it as if, if you were actually transported back into ancient Egyptian times or through a Stargate into and talking to descendants of ancient Egyptians, you'd speak with like a horrible accent, but they could understand you. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and vice versa. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.